Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 131 on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella, and uh, today's conversation is rapid. There's a lot of little points, a lot of anecdotes, a lot of takeaways. And so there won't be an application point at the end of today's episode, but I hope that we can just open the can and have a really good conversation around working for God versus being lazy. There's a lot that we cover and I cannot wait. Let's get into it. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Work hard and do not be lazy. Serve God with a heart full of devotion. I have got Kate here with me in studio. Kate, so good to have you. Thanks for having me. Glad to be back. It's interesting. We were talking about Romans 12.2 yesterday and we're dipping a little further into this chapter. So maybe... You know, an early application point is dive into the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, and you'll see how both of these verses connect and the context of them. Um, but today we're looking at Romans 12, 11, work hard and do not be lazy. Serve God with a heart full of devotion. Kate, what are your first impressions of this one? <laughs> <laughs> I think we are complicated human beings. Uh, I heard a, a great podcast from uh, Donald Miller saying that, you know, we can be disciplined in most areas of our life, but then like terrible at exercise. And, you know, it's contextual. You know, I think I'm actually a super hard worker, but in my normal nature is I'm a bit lazy. So when I'm resting or I'm at home, you know, I can really let myself go. <laughs> Days in my pajamas, you know, that kind of thing, which is it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I, I definitely am a hard worker. I'm really driven. I think I run like six businesses. I've always got ideas. I'm always thinking, what can I be doing? I actually find it hard to to turn off, which is uh, something that I'm working on, finding some more we should, balance we should do it episode on that one because I struggle with that too. I'm one of those yeah. people who check their email before they get out of bed in the morning just to see is there anything I need to look at or exciting not a good habit but I, I definitely am on because I, there's a lot I want to do and achieve in life there's a lot of people that I want to impact and influence I've got so many ideas and uh, you know I also want to be able to provide for my family I'd like to buy a house one day you know all of those kind of things so I know that no one when you run your own business no one's going to do it unless you do so I definitely am a hard worker um, but on the other flip side I also have a strength of responsibility if you've ever done strength finders or Myers-Briggs or any of those personality uh, tests one of the things that comes up for me is this strength of responsibility mm. so that is wonderful because I say yes to something and I take it really seriously and I want to do it well I want to honor the the yes but then on the flip side of that and usually the weakness of that strength is that I often feel burdened by the things that I but I'm I, I meant to to do this I have to do this I said yes uh, I'm a leader or I'm responsible for that and I can't not do it mm. and so I've personally had to learn to say you know what it's okay to renege on an agreement or to break a promise even if there's some consequences I've got to make sure that I'm taking care of myself and you know cleaning up any messes that I make but you know I've had to learn this level of driven versus lazy and also responsibility versus uh you know taking care of myself and not being burdened yeah. by those things it's been a very interesting <laughs> well see that's journey. the thing it, it takes a journey to get to that point it takes being so exhausted that you are not functioning in other areas of life before you realize okay I need to be able to say no to some things and I actually need to say to someone. And I think this is the thing that I have found. People are really gracious and understanding. Like sometimes you might come up against something, but most of the time when you say to someone, hey, I know I said yes then, but now I actually don't have capacity. Um, you'd be surprised, I think, you know, for you listening right now, if you are struggling with uh, <laughs> what you've got on your plate, um, people are exceptionally understanding because everyone's going through so much right now. And I think as a result of that, there's just more grace as well. Uh, something that I've tried to do to help, you know, kind of keep that on, in, in, on track and make sure that I'm, I'm not overwhelming myself is that... It's kind of like if you go, oh, I want a new pair of jeans. Some people just buy and they have like 30 pairs of jeans. I only have two pairs of jeans and I only get a new pair of jeans if one has broken or, mm. you know, ripped in the middle or whatever. And so there's a sense of rather than just adding more to my plate, I can only add more if I take something else off. Yeah. And so I've been learning to be a little bit more um, 
that if I say yes to this, I have to say no to something else. I'm not just saying yes to lots of things. There is a, a yes and a no in that space. And that's been really helpful so that I don't get myself burdened. But, you know, do I do it all the time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are very good at overestimating our ability to uh, deliver and yep. sometimes underestimating how much time you actually have. <laughs> my dad, and I talk about my dad, and this should be my dad on this podcast. His name is Rob. He's amazing. He always says, things always take longer and cost more than you think oh, you will. Oh my gosh, they will story take. of painting our bedroom. Oh my goodness. My yes. goodness. Um, my sweet husband was like, yeah, we'll get the whole house. <laughs> this is hilarious. So we, little segue and a little side note into what's going on at home for us. Um, we got the front half of the house recarpeted. So it's three rooms and they were going to come and do it in about a week and a half's time. And so we thought to ourselves, oh, well, we're emptying all the furniture there anyway. We might as well get the painting of the three rooms done. Boom. Yeah. We'll just get the repainting done. We did a quarter of a room. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and like uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it truly is the situation where um, it, things always take longer than you think they will, and you also have to account for the fact that if it's something new you're taking on, yes, there's the extra mental energy and just the adjustment energy that goes into taking on something new as well. So, word of caution: if you're just saying yes to a brand new thing, the new thing itself, yes, will take time, but also adjusting. To that new thing it takes time and energy too. <laughs> yes, and amen. And you know, Joy, you are not a professional painter, so it makes no, sense I am that not. you uh, yeah, did yeah. not smash through it in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the conversation we're having because this verse is really practical. Um, but it also, if you're reading it in one sense, you might feel very uh, pressured by this verse, or may feel quite shamed into, oh, God, I've got to work harder. I, I need to not be lazy. I need to serve God with a heart full of devotion. If you read it through that lens, this verse is going to seem really challenging and maybe even exhausting. But what I love, I think for me, my um, the thing that I see about God in this verse expressed is that he does care about us working hard. I mean, the, one of the first things he did with Adam and Eve was give them jobs, really, mm -hmm. <laughs> to tend to a garden, which is not easy. Uh, but the second half of the verse talks about serving God with a heart full of devotion. I love that that second part of that sentence is there in that verse because it's not just work, 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 work. It talks about the state of your heart and it talks about serving God and everything is so much easier when you come at it from serving God and not doing things out of your own strength. Absolutely. It speaks to me about how passionate God is about partnership, mm. that so often he says, let's do this together. I want to do it with you. I don't just want to like click my fingers and it's done. I want us to partner together. And something that in my life, uh, you know, different ways that I partner with God, I worked with a missions organization. I actually grew up in this organization. My parents met and married in, it's called YWAM. And, you know, they, uh, they were, they met there and they got yeah, married, they married in, in the UK and so I've lived in a whole bunch of different places growing up in this mission organization and then as an adult decided hey I love missions I love young people uh, and I love the adventure that this is promising and so and it worked as a full-time volunteer for six years <gasps> I didn't How? earn any money. I do uh, not know the miraculous power of God. Wow. Learned a lot about faith and finances and trusting God and seeing miraculous provision. I was overseas for three months of every of those years doing missions and doing things and God provided and paid. You know, I, there was people who supported me, but I, I think this whole thing of devotion, God cares more about our attitude and our motivation mm. than whether we're going to do things necessarily super well or whether we're going to tick all the boxes. And again, theme this week is about God is not a God with a measuring stick saying, you don't measure up joy. Nope, you haven't done that right. He cares more about our obedience and our stepping out than what necessarily happens out of that because he's after our heart. Mm. And so for me saying yes to God, that wasn't a to, to say yes for six years of volunteerism. Obviously, uh, money is not a high priority for me or a, a deep motivation. I actually want to do something that matters. I want to have an impact and an influence. And so that's why I said yes to doing that. I really felt like God was leading me. And so I was, we were working hard, absolutely in that space, but it was out of devotion for the Lord, love for God, a desire to see lives transformed of young people coming in to discover who God was, but also for them to go and discover that God wants to use them mm. in the world. And that 
was such a joy to do. I kind of miss those days a little bit. The the pedal to the metal and the the last minute provision and the trusting God. Uh, you don't have to trust God as much if you've got everything. You know, it's it's not as so close and deep. And so I'm so grateful for those times because it really taught me about what it means to live uh, with a under, undivided devotion to the Lord. Yeah. You know, as we wrap up today's episode, Kate, for someone who maybe is a little lost in the weeds with saying yes to a lot of things. Things, and they're looking at this verse and they're saying, right, I do work hard. I don't want to be lazy, um, but I'm not quite sure if I'm overloading my plate. I'm not sure if I'm actually doing this for God or doing this out of a sense of loyalty to all the commitments I've made. What would be your encouragement for that person? To tell people, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for it. that invitation. Can I get back to you tomorrow about it? Yeah. Um, even if you want to say yes straight away, uh, to then go and run it by someone to look at everything that you've got on the plate and say, if I have to say yes to this, what do I have to say no to? Um, and then, you know, to be asking God and, you know, God speaks to all of us. So it's an opportunity to invite his thoughts and his perspective on God, should I say yes to this? And then if so, how are you going to help me to do it well? Romans chapter 12, verse 11 Work hard and do not be lazy. Serve God with a heart full of devotion. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. Kate wrapped up with a great application point. Just saying to someone, can I get back to you later? Buy yourself some time to think. So many great takeaway points, and I'm really looking forward to tomorrow's conversation with Kate. Hey, if you haven't already, you can be a part of the Everyday Joy Facebook community. And if you haven't left a five-star written review, that really helps more people discover this podcast and discover a bit more joy as they journey through every day i look forward to catching up again tomorrow right here on the everyday joy podcast 